Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, the two teams we like, Michigan State and Arizona, are both in the Sweet 16. Right? You're pretty much cooking with gas at this point. You could fool around. You can hedge the plays, especially if both teams make it to the Elite Eight. But what if I told you that I could guarantee that a team with at least 50 to 1 odds, right? 50 to 1 odds that you could get today would be guaranteed to make the Elite Eight. Think about it. That would give you an opportunity to literally bet against your own position and make money if, as expected, this long shot team were to lose. Right? We know that it's not whether you win or lose, but whether you cover the spread. Well, let's add an addendum to that. It might not even be whether you cover the spread. It might be how you hedge the position in a tournament, right? For the deep thinkers out there, just let me just say this. Isn't every sports league a tournament at the end of the day when you start looking at playoff brackets? Well, let's take advantage of this tournament. How do I get a 50 to 1 long shot in the Elite Eight? Now, for legal reasons, let me say you're going to have to check the legality of online betting in your jurisdiction. Right? What I want people to do is to just understand that I'm going to refer to an online website purely for illustration purposes only right what you should do is shop around for a brick and mortar casino you could walk into where you can lay similar odds right because I'm assuming if it's brick and mortar in your jurisdiction then it should be legal right look for a legal establishment in which you could lay these odds but understand how the game is played you get a team at great leverage from the casino, in this case at least 50 to 1. Then you bet against the team down the road so that you can double or triple your money. Right now, if you were to go to bovada.lv online, right again, bovada.lv, if it's a different website in your jurisdiction, just figure out what Bovada's URL is in your jurisdiction. You're going to see that right now, on March the 24th, you can get the Stanford Cardinal at 50 to 1 to win the NCAA tournament. That's on the futures. And understand the team they're playing, Dayton, is 100 to 1 to win the NCAA tournament, right? Somebody's got to win that game, folks. The winner of that game is going to be at least a 50 to 1 long shot to win the NCAA. In other words, you can bet both sides of the Stanford-Dayton game, right? Just pick both teams on a futures play. And you're guaranteed odds of at least 50 to 1 coming out of that game. Now let's do the math. If you make it to the Elite 8, right? If these teams were to win one game, it would get them to the Final Four. Two games, it gets them to the Finals. Now understand how to hedge the play. Let's say I have, and I'll pick the lower team, Stanford, at 50 to 1. What that means is I can bet 10 bucks on Stanford. 
if that bet were to pay off, it would pay off $500. I'm not kidding, right? 50 to 1, right? So let's say I bet 10 bucks on Stanford. Let's say I bet 5 bucks on Dayton, right? 5 times 100, I'm getting a possible win there of $500, right? Then in the next round, now keep in mind, pay attention to the money. I am out $15. Right, 10 on Stanford, 5 on Dayton, right, to win the whole thing. Then the next round, the winner of this game almost certainly is going to be the underdog in the next round, right, because these are the long shots. Let's say in the next round, knowing that I'm looking at possible winnings of $500. Let's say that the favorite in the next game is a minus 200. Folks, I could bet $100. Now keep in mind, I'm being conservative here. You figure out your risk tolerance. I can bet $100 that next game to win 50. If that team wins, guess what? I've just removed money from the casino because I would win 50. I'd get back the 100. I would win 50 minus 15. I net $35. Doing what? Taking a minus 200 favorite. Think about it. Right, so all I'm saying is when the leverage is that great, it creates an opportunity. Let's go one step further. Let's say that Stanford or Dayton wins that next game. Folks, there are worse things in life, right, than being <laughs> in the finals on a 50 to one play. Keep in mind, you'd be able to further hedge it, wouldn't you? Right, the final four, right? You'd be able to further hedge it because you've gotten 50 to one odds. You'd be out a hundred bucks, right? Plus, depending on who wins the Stanford Dayton game, either an additional 10 bucks or an additional five bucks out. So you'd be out 110 or 105 bucks. But keep in mind, you would still have either a 50 to 1 or a 100 to 1 play still going. So you'd be able to hedge the play further. Right? Think about it. So, to positional betters people who are not looking for picks on upcoming games, but rather are looking for positions, right? Not betting picks, but betting strategies. I want you to take a hard look at Stanford against Dayton, right? I want you to seriously consider the possibility of having at least 50 to 1 leverage in the Elite Eight. Right. All I'm saying is, again, the way to play it is to get the leverage and then it's to bet against the leverage. Right. You have so much to work with. That you're very likely to stumble into a very nice profit. Let your friends worry about unprotected betting and betting without hedges and throwing darts, hoping to hit something right here. Regardless of who wins the tournament, you might be able to cash out early with a nice profit without even ever betting on the team that wins the tournament. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Understand, too, that this isn't the only attractive hedge on the docket. You have other games that you could play with. I've recommended to gamblers here before the first game was played to look at Arizona hard. They were a nine to one 
shot at the beginning of this. Understand their next game is against San Diego State. Think about it. You don't even have to wait until the Elite Eight to fool around with hedging that play. Because right now, casinos are offering you San Diego State University to win the entire tournament at 33 to 1 odds. So if you have a position on Arizona, you could now take a futures position on their opponent in the upcoming game, San Diego State. And you would have leverage regardless of who wins that play going into the Elite Eight. Whether you believe in those teams or not, understand. The leverage would allow you to bet against them in such a way that if it hits, you profit. If it doesn't hit, you're alive going into the next round. In other words, the hedging system gives you multiple opportunity to beat the casino. Most casual bettors look at futures as simply a way to pick the winner of the tournament. You should look at futures as a way to pick a position that gets you leverage so that you can play both sides of the fence. I view Stanford versus Dayton, 50 to 1 versus 100 to 1, with someone guaranteed to win the game to get you into the Elite Eight with at least 50 to 1 leverage as an opportunity. Take a look at the brackets, crunch the numbers, give it a look. Let me hear from you. Remember, our goal here is to beat the casino. If you see another glamorous, attractive play, let us know about it. Let me also say, too, just to the truly hardcore gamblers, one of the storylines that's not being reported enough in these NCAAs is just how dominant the Pac-12 has been. Right? Understand. Oregon was hanging tough with two seed Wisconsin late in that game. They didn't fall apart until the last 90 seconds of that game. Well, forget Oregon. What about the Stanford Cardinal taking out Kansas, the much higher seed? What about UCLA still alive in the Sweet 16? What about Arizona? still alive in the Sweet 16, right? Those are the factors you want to consider. UCLA is still an 18-1 to win the tournament, right? They're playing a juggernaut, Florida. But just understand their conference is looking pretty good, right? Even Florida, a favorite, is something like a 3-1 to one to 3.5-1 to one favorite. So, one way to possibly play UCLA would be to take UCLA to win the entire thing at 18-1 while betting on Florida, right, to win that game or taking Florida at 3.5-1 to one as you take UCLA at 18-1. to one. If UCLA pulls the upset, you would have leverage in the Elite Eight. Work with it, fool around, just understand anytime you have brackets, you have an opportunity to get leverage from the casinos. I'm here to tell you many of these teams have been mispriced. Many of these conferences have been undervalued. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.